Hi there, I hope you're well. Just a quick follow on from the previous video about the DIY MFT because I have DIY MFT plans available now. These are on my Etsy store. They're the usual set of plans for me, sort of PDFs full of, you know, color coded with a load of bump and some links and stuff uh, on the back page to all the bits and pieces that I used. Um, I think that's the usual bench uh, plan price of $5.99. You might get charged VAT for that, that's why. I leave all that sort of stuff to Etsy. I'll link all that up down below. Um, last week's video has gone very well. Thank you very much everybody who took a look. Um, I did just want to use this time to quickly address a couple of comments that I had. They were along the lines of, oh, it's all very well for you with your, your fancy coloured MDF and your birch ply. We're just, you know, impoverished architects and dentists. We can't afford that kind of thing. And it got me thinking that, you know, <laughs> if you want to build a cheaper version of an MFT, then you use cheaper materials. One of the things, I know, let, me, let me show you, hang on. YouTube members and Patreon supporters, We'll recognize this, they'll be sick to death of this actually. But this is the proof of concept that I made just from a little bit of scrap MDF just to see if the idea was going to be a flyer. I've got an old MFT top that I've chopped about to get the hole pattern slightly differently. I changed it after this to make something slightly, slightly different. But I'd have absolutely no problem, no problem at all using this. Just screw the top down, get yourself a couple of bench dogs and a rail. And that's kind of all you need. The, the basic structure is the same as what you get in the plans. There's a step-by-step -step build video that comes with those plans as well, by the way. I'll, I'll run a little clip of that later so you see. The kind of thing that you're getting but the the trick to getting something not as cheap but as less costly as possible is to just not use the hardware the hardware on this build was what really bumped up the overall cost the i think i said at the time the dashboard rail hinge as lovely as it is doubled the price um, the bench dog fence again as lovely as it is pretty much doubled what I'd spent already on, on all the other bits and pieces. So you can get that cost down quite considerably just by not having the hardware. That doesn't mean that you can't, that you shouldn't build the hardware in or the, the capacity for the hardware. You could still leave these slots available for your T-Track and stuff, but just not fit the T-Track until you've got it. Um, I also used 22 mil at the back here just because that's what I needed to fit my IKEA curtain track. But the only reason I was using the IKEA curtain track is because this was the uh, most cost effective extrusion that I could find that with a little bit of adaptation would take the Festool rail hinge. But if we're not using the Festool rail hinge, well, you don't need that. You could just make two, two fronts. And have one of them at the back if you want an extrusion at the back at all. I think it's worth having um, a T track just to have other clamping possibilities. But yeah, absolutely doable to make a, a, a thrifty version of an MFT. I know Matt at Badger Workshop has done one recently, and I think Leo at the Handicraft Channel has incorporated an MFT alike part into a big bench that he's just built. Um, I've just bought actually an MFT jig. I will be doing an MFT, a DIY MFT top video where we look at different methods of perhaps getting making your own MFT top. I've just bought a jig for that. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make the most economical, the cheapest, the thriftiest MFT that I can. And I will genuinely do it. I'll, I'll buy all the bits that I need. I'll go out and scrounge whatever I need. I won't call in any favours. Um, I'll go around all the DIY stores and see what I can find in the in the scrap bin, see if I can make something up from that. But literally, it's it's 
less than a, a lot less than a quarter of a sheet of 12 mil and just about exactly a quarter sheet of 18 mil to build something like this plus the top of course can't get away with that but yeah let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see i will run the little clip of the step-by-step -step video that accompanies this uh, set of plans right now and i'll see you in the next one next video will probably be uh, a set of shelves to go up here i've got some birch ply uh, shelves just to go up there just to fill that wall a little uh, up a little bit more i'm not sure if i'll have that for next week or the one after but it's coming and uh, yeah fingers crossed you'll see me then okay that's it for this one take care in proportion you're an adult you can figure that out I'm sure uh, there are links on the last page of these plans to purchase the items that I used or you can use anything similar that you choose remember as well that these plans are just a starting point change them or adapt them to your requirements as needed make them your own On the plans, all the dimensions are clearly marked and the material thickness colour-coded. And I've worked my way through the cutting list for the front and rear of the carcass. I want the sides to fit within the front and rear, and here I've used offcuts from the front and rear materials 22mm MDF, 12mm birch ply, 18mm birch ply, and 12mm birch again. And I can just butt one end of the side sections tightly against these, then draw a line on the underside of the workpiece using the edge of the top as a reference. Cut the two sides down and we have a perfect fit.